Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a post-game edition of March Madness. The Ohio State Buckeyes have advanced to the Final Four. They will play at Tropicana Field next weekend against the University of Connecticut. It has been a season of improbabilities that has ended up in one of the most improbable scenarios that we could possibly think of. Take a look, Devon Smith on the ladder inside Thompson Bowling Arena right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. These are live pictures cutting down the nets as the Buckeyes reached the Final Four. They were Elite Eight in 1992. They lost to Michigan. They were not to be denied tonight. Beating St. John's Red Storm 77 to 74, the final. John Sanderson, an integral part, starting the entire season for this Buckeye basketball team. Ken Johnson in the middle today was probably the difference in this ball game. He had five blocks in the first half, padded that total out in the second half with some great defense. And Kenny takes the ladder. I don't think he really needs it at six foot eleven. Ken Johnson with seven blocks and one net to his name. He had 12 points as well, so Johnson getting it done. If we had to pick an MVP, it might have been him. Offensively and defensively. George Reese spelling some time in this game. Saw limited action. Most of it coming in the second half but Reese been a solid Buckeye all season long. They'll take their turn cutting down the nets. Scooney Penn, what more can you say about Scooney Penn? Takes control of every game he touches the ball in. This one was no different. Great travel crowd, I might add. The Buckeye faithful made the trip. What I said was, what is five and a half hours over the course of a lifetime? They made the trip down here to Knoxville and cheered on the Buckeyes a decided home court advantage for Ohio State Buckeyes enjoying one of what they hope is two chances to cut down the nets Scooney Penn will get his folks 1968 was the last time the Buckeyes went to the final four they've made history all season long with the turnaround it continues. Scooney takes a bow. The Connecticut Huskies and Ohio State played for the NIT championship in 1989. Now they will get a chance to face each other in the final four. Assistant coaches taking the stand, getting their shot at it you know that they will leave one last strand. That's Dave Spiller. Next up is Rick Boyages taking the climb. A young Scooney fan. Paul, you're next. Randy. What we're getting is a, a tape version from CBS right now. This looks like right after the game when they're handing out the hats. Oh, guys, just can't OPB's believe it. Michael Red visibly in tears. Shamar Heron got in the game against Detroit back in Indianapolis. Last week seemed just so long ago. That's bragging rights for Shamar Heron against Detroit. You see Brian Brown jump in the picture and hug Michael Red. Brian Brown playing against some of his schoolboy opponents from the Catholic City League in New York City today, playing for St. John's, so he'll have bragging rights when he goes home for the summer. Michael Red will come back to Columbus absolutely feeling like a champion, and well, they should. They give the shirt off their back for their teammates, and they'll take those final four shirts and put them right on. The irony of this situation is, folks, we sat outside earlier tonight and watched the St. John's uh, manager bring those very shirts into the St. John's team Buckeyes end up with them. They had to pass them across the court and end up with them. Right now, uh, guys, tell me where we're going. All right, we're going to take a little break. We're going to step aside, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to hear from some of the Buckeyes in postgame. Stay with us. Welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee, where the Ohio State Buckeyes have reached the final four, 77 to 74, the final in this ball game. Jim O'Brien getting a chance to cut down the nets, the last strand of net 
save for him as well it should be. We have a chance now to go to the highlights of this ball game if you didn't get a chance to see it. John Cooper on hand for the Ohio State Buckeye football team, helping out the basketball team. It's one big family. Michael Red, the dunk off the fast break got things started. Scooney Penn kept it going. The bucket and the foul and a four zip lead make it five zip. Ken Johnson, big man inside. Johnson with the dunk and it's 11 to five off the start of this ball game. Jason Singleton, the laying off the break, a nice athletic move, and then Michael Red answers it from the left side. 21-13, it's an eight-point lead. LeVar Postel hits the three, 21-16 at that point. Michael Red playing above the rim, the alley-oop, and it's a nine-point lead for the Buckeyes. Red knocks down another three to make it a 10-point lead at that point, 35-25. Red again down the lane. Inside, it's Bootsy Thornton. The bucket and the foul. It's a six-point game at that point, but Red closes out the first half, and the Buckeyes take a 41-33 lead into the break. Eight points as they go to the break, and Michael Red with 17 points in the first half picks up right where he left off. Up and under for the bucket, and a 10-point lead at 43-33. Ken Johnson inside, knocks down the jumper. 11-point lead for the Buckeyes. Great pass by Scooney Penn, backdoor. Jason Singleton on the receiving end of it keeps the lead at 11. Postel was big. He knocks down the three-pointer, making it a six-point game at this point. It was tight down the end. Boban Savovich knocks down the three. That bumped the lead up to 13 points for the Ohio State Buckeyes, their largest lead, but Ron Artest knocks down a three to cut into that lead. Ken Johnson the hook. As we mentioned, seven blocked shots and Johnson getting it done on offense as well, but Scooney Penn, 69-59, Buckeyes with the lead at this point. Inside, Johnson, the big block, one of his seven. Then it's up ahead to Jason Singleton. Singleton, up and under, the great move, 73-64, to the Buckeyes with a nine-point lead, but Ron Artest would come to the rescue for the St. John Red Storm. That makes it a two-point game at 75-73, and this was the difference. Scooney Penn, the great defense on Eric Bartley, Michael Red ends up with the ball, and the Buckeyes end up sealing the deal with a 77-74 to victory over St. John's. You can see the celebration there, folks. Obviously elated down the stretch of this ball game because Jim O'Brien prides himself and his team on keeping them prepared down the stretch of ball game. Situational defense, situational offense. That's what he and his assistant coaches do this ties the buckeyes for wins in a season right now as they head to the final four with a chance to go ahead and add to that but as i was saying that is situational offense and defense down the stretch that he prides himself on probably not too proud of the free throws but in the end they hit the ones that they needed and held on for the win a very proud athletic director by the name of andy geiger standing by with dom to Barry. dom take it away Jeff, thanks a lot, and as you can see, the man next to me, very happy, OSU Athletic Director Andy Geiger. And Andy, you got tears in your eyes. Can you believe this? I can't believe the courage of that basketball team and, and uh, just, just how hard they played all the way through this. This is fantastic. I mean, you talk about rags to riches, Jim O'Brien, Scooney Penn, the, the whole organization. How about Kenny Johnson? Jim has said all year long we need other guys other than uh, Michael and Scooney and, you know, Jason and... Kenny, all the guys, it was a great team victory. It's okay to say the Buckeyes are heading to Florida in the Final Four. We're on our way south. Talk a little bit about this turnaround. I mean, uh, Andy, uh, you, you hired Jim O'Brien. He has a rough year, eight wins last year, and then boom, here we are. But I think that the way the fans appreciated the eight wins last year and the reception that they gave, they gave Coach O'Brien, they could see that this was going to go in the right direction. It's ahead of schedule, man, but I'll take it. It's wonderful. How about the crowd here, too? I mean, this place was overtaken by Buckeye fans. This is why... Ohio State is the greatest place to do what we do in the whole United States because we got the best fans. Anything you want to say to the folks back home? Come on down to Florida. OSU Athletic Director Andy Geiger, you look at that smile, you know that's one happy man. Jeff, let's throw it back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Dom, and well, he should be happy. Buckeye fans have a trip to Tropicana Field in the mix. All right, folks. When we return, we'll have more cutting of the nets. We'll have post-game interviews. Stay with us.
on March Madness. Welcome back to an Elite Eight edition of March Madness, and this has fast turned into a Final Four edition of March Madness. Of course, we are your source for Buckeye basketball. <laughs> That's the dirty buck dance by uh, Michael Red and George Reese right there. You saw George Red, or uh, George Reese and Michael Red there. That's the City League dance that they call it from back in Columbus. Now it's amazing how fast he can get off the court and right into the arms of our Dom DeBerry. 20 points for Michael Red. Dom has him right now. All right, Jeff, uh, this guy here back at Columbus, I know his family's happy. I know they're all happy down here. Michael Red, you're headed to the Final Four. This is what I came to Ohio State for. The program was struggling. I made a commitment to come here and see success happen, and now it's happening. I'm so happy right now, Dom. Can you put into words what you were feeling the final seconds of this ball game? There's a lot of pressure. You know, it's first off, no pressure all year, but uh, it's going to get better. So the team made a big play on the end of the stretch. You know, it was a great team effort tonight, and we put it off. How about the effort by St. John's? They came in here. They're a good club. They're a great club. You know, I thought they were one of the top two teams in the country. And uh, they played hard into the down, down to the end of the game, you know, making big plays and whatnot. But this team showed a lot of heart and stuck with it. We refuse to lose this game. Have you ever experienced anything like this, Michael? Never in my life. I never won anything in my life. It's the first time I won a championship or whatever and going to the Final Four. You know, it's a great failure. Can't get no greater. Great when, when you look at what you were able to do tonight, and it, it was almost as though you elevated your game to another level. Yeah, it was a big game. It was a big game. I had to show up. It's the postseason. You're going to the Final Four. You know, it's right in your hands. All you got to do is perform. And uh, we did that tonight. And of course, you can only see the Final Four on Channel 10, right? Channel 10. You can only see it on Channel 10. Great feeling. Great feeling. Michael Red. Thank you very much, Michael. Jeff, let's throw it back to you. <laughs> Down to Barry, never afraid of a little same, shameless self-promotion for Channel 10. I tell you what, uh, Michael Red said he never won anything. Well, he's a winner tonight. The Buckeyes winner, 77-74. to 74. This is an interesting matchup between head coaches because Jim O'Brien coached at Boston College the same time that Mike Jarvis coached at Boston University. Jarvis proposed what would have been a city league championship in the city of Boston. Jim O'Brien, being at Boston College, didn't have a lot to gain playing the uh, less than Big East caliber Boston University team, so he politely declined. There was a lot of interest from Jarvis. There was no interest from Jim O'Brien. This team is actually on the schedule, St. John's, is on the Buckeye schedule for next year. This was a sneak preview of it. Dom Tuberi has straightened out his hair and corralled Ken Johnson right now. Hey, Dom. Jeff, you see the big man, big Ken Johnson. Ken, first of all, how does it feel? Oh, man, God has truly blessed us. This is the best feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. I mean, God is truly good. Um, I, I just want to thank everybody, my mom, coach, teammates, and everybody for just coming out here and just sticking by us to, to um, Stick it in. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, and go Bucks. Can you believe it? You're heading to Florida, the Final Four. Woo! Final Four. Oh, man. At the beginning of the year, I didn't know what to think. I could, I could never even have imagined even being in the Final Four, at least till next year. But God has truly blessed us. We are here, and we are the Buckeyes. All right, Ken Johnson, thank you very much. Who do we have back here? Big George Reese. Oh, Come on in here, George. All right, Jeff, and it's George Reese. George, how does it feel? Oh, this is the best one I ever felt in my life, baby. It don't get no better than this. It don't get no better than this. Can you say St. Petersburg, Final Four? I can say it three times. St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg. Talk a little bit about this game and the way you guys were able to do it tonight. I think we just came out and we had our mindset. We wanted to go to the Final Four, and you got to give credit to St. John's. They're a good team, and we just got to come out and win the game. And it got tight at the end, but we prevailed. Talk a little bit about uh, the final seconds of that ball game. How nervous were you? Ooh, we started coming down to free throws, and we all know who, who been shooting poorly from the free throw line all year, but we got it there. How about the job by Scooney Penn? Oh, you, you got to give Scooney his due. I mean, he's been doing it all year long, all tournament long. You know, this is just another game to him. All right, Jeff, there it is. George Reese, the Buckeyes, headed to the Final Four. We'll have more for you in just a minute. What Let's up, throw Hitty it back B? to you. What up, Hitty B? <laughs> George Reese getting a little word in back to the Columbus folks just as we are having a good time with this post game show we're going to step aside right now take a break when we come back we have plenty more 
on this edition of March Madness, live from Knoxville, Tennessee. Stay with us. Yeah, sky's beginning to clear there, as you see. The sun will be coming up a little bit later. Bumper, bumper traffic over that way, not in good shape. 10 TV Eyewitness News at noon starts now. A new day has dawned in Ohio. We but generally, it's changed to rain overnight. And the new elected in November is finally on the ground. Tonight, road. shocking words from a man. Back in the AP poll. Eyewitness News tomorrow morning. Each day, Eyewitness News tomorrow morning. Eyewitness News tomorrow morning. Each day, more Central Ohioans get their news from 10 TV Eyewitness News, your 24-hour news source. Welcome back to another edition of March Madness. This is an Elite Eight version with Final Four caps. I hope the players bring me one of those hats out here. Buckeyes happy after the victory. 77 to 74 over St. John's making a return, their first return to the Final Four since 1968. Unbelievable for the Buckeyes. And right now, the guy who deserves a lot of the credit, the leader, Jim O'Brien, Dom Tiberi is with him. Dom. All right, Jeff, here we go. And uh, this man here, I'll tell you what, Jim O'Brien, first of all, the final four. It can be said now. How does it feel? It feels great. Uh, never in a hundred years would we have thought that we would get to this. It's an unbelievable testament to the kids that we have in our program. From the very beginning, they've been focused, respectful, they pay attention. And I feel very thankful that I've had an opportunity to coach this group of kids. What was going through your mind, final seconds of the game? You had a one-point lead to... Just let the clock run out. If the clock wasn't moving fast enough, we got scattery. Nobody knows what goes through the minds of young kids in this type of a pressure cooker. And we felt it a little bit. We missed a few free throws. But it's over, and we hung on. How about the crowd that's here, Jim? They're hanging on. I mean, amazing. I'm not surprised. Our fans are second to nobody. They've come down. They, they followed us to Indianapolis. They came down for this. Clearly, the house was ours today. And, uh, you know, without our fans, we wouldn't have won as many games as we have. Last thing, Scooney Penn. Just talk about him. I could go on and on speaking about that kid. You know, everybody knows how much I love him. He's a, not only a good player, a wonderful, wonderful young man. And, uh, when he decided to come to Ohio State, he forfeited an opportunity to be with a team that was in the tournament to come to a program that was losing. And I'm sure he was saying, I hope I'm doing the right thing. This is payoff for all of that. This man stands for class, folks. Jim O'Brien, they're headed, the Buckeyes, to the Final Four. Let's throw it back to you, Jeff. All right, Dom, thank you very much. Jim O'Brien now 9-3 and three in NCAA tournament play. Scooney Penn, he referred to him almost speechless like I was about his star player. 22 points for Scooney to lead the Buckeyes. And you talk about a great turnaround and somebody who deserves a lot of the credit and is getting payback. You have to talk about the two seniors, Jason Singleton and Nashawn Coleman. They were both given the option to leave the Ohio State Buckeye basketball program when Jim O'Brien got here. They decided to gut it out as well and stay right with the program. And it has paid dividends. Not only with the winning season, the big turnaround from last year, winning just eight games, just one in the Big Ten, but the turnaround season of this year that nobody would have expected if you would have told the Buckeyes that they had a chance to go to the NIT, they probably would have taken that when this season began. But now the dream is uh, being realized about going to the Final Four. The Buckeyes are headed to Tropicana Field. And Sean Coleman, uh, very excited, obviously, along with Jason Singleton and the rest of the Buckeye team. This is a group that works very hard, a group that is very close from the time that we've spent with them traveling on the road and the, and the very little time that we've had in the two weeks between the, uh, between the Big Ten tournament and then between the trip to Indianapolis for the first rounds and then here and now, the guy that uh, Jim O'Brien was talking about, Scooney Penn, I understand Dom Tiberi is with him. Dom? All right, Jeff, here he is, the star of the show, the MVP of the South Regional. And Scooney, first of all, congratulations. Just your thoughts. Um, I'm just happy for this team. I think, you know, the guys deserve it. Columbus deserves it. Ohio State deserves it. Ohio deserves it. Um, and I'm happy to give it to them. Talk about tonight's game and the way you guys were able to just take it to them. Uh, we played hard from the beginning. We knew it was going to be a tough game. We stuck together. We worked hard the whole time. And we pulled it off. You're a guy at the beginning of the year said, hey, NIT nothing. We're going to the NCAA tournament. The final four, did you ever imagine? No, I, I, that's why if I imagined it, I would have said it. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to get us to the tournament first, and um, anything else would be a plus. 
You go up against UConn now. Just your thoughts on UConn. Uh, they're a very good team. They're one of the best teams. You know, them and Duke are the best teams in the country, and uh, it's another tough game for us. The Buckeyes are the hottest team, or it got to be one of the hottest teams in the country. Can you guys win this whole shooting match now? Um, we'll have to see. We're going to continue doing what we did all season, taking one game at a time. Tony Penn, anything you want to say to back to the to the folks that are here and then the folks back in Columbus? Um, I just want to say thank you to you know everyone who supported us the whole season, stuck behind us, and um, you know stay behind us to the Final Four. Were you surprised by the amount of people here? I'm not surprised. I know people of Ohio, uh, you know, very, you know, stuff. they have given a lot of good support and um, they've done it all season. Tony Penn, congratulations. He's the MVP of the South Regional. He's headed to the Final Four with the Buckeyes. Jeff, back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Dom. Lots of that crowd still sticking around for a lot of the post-game celebration. We've got some video of some uh, key points from throughout this ball game uh, tonight, and one of them has to do with a lot of the fast breaks that the Buckeyes were able to get out on. Forced some turnovers, were able to get through uh, a, a lot of points off of the break. That is something that they didn't get to do against Auburn, but obviously something that they love to do, get out and get on the break and score some points. They played tough in the lane, and they played tough from outside. Michael Red knocking down some key three-pointers. I think he hit three out of five shots for the Buckeyes in one stretch, and all three were three-pointers down the end of this game. Fast break points in the tw were 12 to four in favor of the Buckeyes in the first half of this ball game, and they added to that in the second half. Jason Singleton standing by one of those seniors we just talked about with Dom Tiberi. Dom. Jeff, we're joined by the other senior on this basketball team. Of course, Jason Singleton. Jason, you're headed to the Final Four. Yes, it's, it's a truly a blessing for us. Uh, we're all very happy. We played our hearts out tonight. St. John's, they're a great team. It was a battle to the very end, and we're just happy we went to the Final Four. You guys really elevated your game to another level tonight. Yeah, you know, we had a great contribution from guys like Ken Johnson. He's definitely a, a beast down low in the paint. Uh, Brian Brown, he played great defense. Uh, Boban, he came in. He played hard for us. Everybody, you know, everybody played hard tonight. That was a key for us. And that's a key for us in the future in the, in the Final Four. How about the fans? There's no question. Uh, the majority of the fans here were Buckeyes tonight. Yeah, we, we, uh, we felt like we were back home with the shot. The whole place was red and white. They were all screaming for us. And, you know, got to give them a lot of credit. We get a shot of them. We get a shot of the fans. They all came out. They all came out and supported us. And that's what we need. You go up against UConn now. What's your thoughts right now? Uh, they're a great team. Uh, they got a lot of weapons offensively. They push the ball. They play good defense. And you know, it's going to be another battle for us. We have to come ready to play. We've got a whole week to prepare. So we, we have to get in, watch a little film on them, and just work hard. Jason, why not? Why not win the whole shooting match? Hey, we don't have anything to lose. We just had a fun right now. Hoping the fun, the fun to continue. Jason Singleton, congratulations. Jeff, back to you. All right, thanks, Dom. And uh, Jason Singleton playing director there for a second, sending our cameras off to the fans that have stuck around to cheer this team on. I know one thing. I'm interested to know what's going on back in Columbus, so I'll play director and send it to Mike Thompson standing by live in Columbus. Mike, how's it going up there? I tell you, Jeff, this place went nuts when Ohio State won just about an hour ago, 45 minutes ago. We're at Champs Americana on Lennox, and this place went absolutely bananas. Here you can see out the bracket right here. There it is, Ohio State. Aaron is placed in the Final Four right there, taking on UConn. Folks here in Columbus are just excited. Almost a stunned crowd here, disbelieving the fact that the Buckeyes are in the Final Four. You watched the game, what'd you think? It was great. I mean, nobody even gave Ohio State a chance to even make it to the tournament, let alone going to the Final Four. I say, you know, St. John's great team. Bring on Duke, baby. Woo! Now, you had to have been a little bit nervous when they started missing those foul shots and it got, close, it got close down the end. Yeah, but you know a good team is going to rise to the top in the occasion. Scooney Penn, Michael Red, they came up, knocked down the free throws. Best team won today, baby. Thanks very much. As you can see, Buckeye fans are ecstatic. They can't wait for next Saturday when the Bucks take on the Huskies of UConn. And they're predicting a date next uh, week from Monday night in the championship game. Jeff? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mike, very much, and we hope that we will be there with the Buckeyes on Monday night. We'll be there either way because 10 TV is your source for the road to the Final Four. Hopefully the Bucks will take it all the way. We'll be there every step of the way, like we said. And one of the guys uh, also responsible, we talked about so many people involved in this program, but a very tight-knit group is the coaching staff that Jim O'Brien has assembled and brought with him from Boston College. And one of those guys, Paul Biancardi, has stopped by Dom Tiberi. Hey, Dom. 
Guy assistant coach Paul Biancardi. Paul, first of all, just put it into words. It's just unbelievable. You just can't feel it yet. It's the, the body's still tingling. It's still numb, and it's just an incredible feeling, Dom. You, you had told me when you came over here that you thought this team would be better this year after winning eight games last year. Did you ever imagine you'd be headed to the Final Four? No, not in a million years. Not headed to the Final Four. But you know what? Winning's contagious. And we started winning early in the year. They started believing in what we were doing. And we just kept on winning. And this team has a lot of resilience and a lot of character. Jim's been cautiously optimistic. Didn't want to talk about the tournament. <laughs> Why not win the whole thing now? Why not? It's a two-game two season right now. And we're going to try to win both games. Absolutely. You go up against, uh, what, UConn? We're very familiar with UConn. One of the best teams in the country with some of the best players in the country and uh, that's going to be an unbelievable game. You'll be handling a lot of that scouting. You've, you've probably already been working. What can you tell us about UConn? Do, do you match up well with them? Well, we think we match up pretty well with them. they got a great guard in El Amin and a great off guard in Hamilton Player of the Year, possibly, and uh, they love to run. They're a transition team. We're going to have our work cut out for us, especially on the defensive end. OSU assistant coach Paul Biancardi, congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations. Who's number one, Buckeyes? Uh, Say Buckeyes. Buckeyes. There you go, Buckeyes. Jeff, back to you. <laughs> Absolutely an adorable scene. I'll tell you, a little bit of rain falling here in Knoxville, but you cannot dampen the parade that the Buckeyes are having right now. One of the men responsible uh, for this Buckeye resurgence, Scooney Penn, not only 22 points, but eight assists in this ball game for Scooney Penn. None other than people just seem to lock up when they think about defending him or think about talking about him. He is voted the regional MVP of this South region. The four seed Buckeyes go on to advance to the final four. Ken Johnson inside. He had seven blocks on this day. 18 for the tournament. Unbelievable play out of the big man. He also put up 13 points to the Buckeyes tonight. So getting it done on both ends of the court. And they would need a big, big play out of the man in the middle, Ken Johnson. And they did. Up next is UConn for Ohio State Buckeyes, of course. I want to see the matchup between Scooney Penn and Khalid El Amin. Point guard against point guard. Should be a great matchup. They beat Gonzaga tonight. 67-62 to advance to the final four as well. So half of the bracket is done. The other half will be decided tomorrow, but nothing else matters to the Buckeyes because they are right there and ready to go on the road to the final four all the way to St. Petersburg and Tropicana Field. We're going to go back right now and we're going to relive a little bit of the celebration since it's been so long, all of 20 or 25 minutes. The City League Championship guys of Columbus, Michael Redd, John Sanderson and all the guys saying a little prayer there with their final four caps on and just enjoying the moment here. Just about 20 minutes ago, right after this game, the Buckeyes realizing Devon Smith, Jason Singleton right there. That's right. Knowing right now that the dream has become a reality. It was a two-tournament season when they went to the Big Ten. Things did not work out for them there. It was down to one tournament. The Buckeyes have made the most of their chances in this one tournament. They have faced a Murray State team, a 13 seed. They won that game. They beat Detroit, a 10 seed. They went on to beat Auburn, a number one seed, and then faced the number three seed. In the South region, all four top seeds made it to the South region. I don't know what the committee is thinking because three and four go on and win that game, but I guess when you get all four of the top seeds into the region, the committee has done its job and it's just pressure-packed basketball, as Jim O'Brien referred to just a second ago. And that makes you a little bit tenser when you're on the free throw line. Buckeyes maybe had some trouble uh, earlier in the season, worked through that, struggled down the stretch of this ball game, but did hit them when they needed it for a 77-74 win. And right now, we will go into the press conference live where Jim O'Brien is addressing the media. I think the first thing is the... It's just really, really hard to uh, to put into words the feeling that uh, that is shared by by all of us right now because it's it's hard to imagine that we've put ourselves in this position. And um, the thing that I am very thankful for is a the opportunity to to get to Ohio State, but the opportunity more importantly to coach this group of guys. 
this has been as good a group that I've ever been affiliated with. Uh, they have been respectful. They have been uh, conscientious. They've done every single thing that we've asked of them all year long. And I feel very thankful and fortunate that, uh, that I've coached these kids. Uh, our hat obviously goes off to St. John's. Uh, they refused to just go away nicely. Uh, they, they made a furious comeback. And, uh, but for the one or two plays that we needed to make at the end, who knows what could have happened. Uh, I thought that we played very well for basically 38 minutes. And uh, we were happy that we were able to hold on. So terrific win for us. And uh, this is as good as it gets for the time being. So we, we have to be very thankful. That's it. Okay, in case you can't read the placards up here, it's Sean Coleman down at that end, Scooney Penn, Michael Red, Jason Singleton are the uh, student athletes here ready to take your questions. Again, we have the people with the microphones who will come around. So raise your hand for questions only for the student athletes at this time, after which we'll get back to Coach O'Brien. Okay, over here. Bruce Hooley, Cleveland Plain Dealer. For Scooney and Mike, take us through the last play as Barkley drives toward the basket. Scooney, did you get a hand on the ball? And Mike, what did you see? You came up with the loose ball. What did you see? Um, I, I'm not even sure what happened. I think I got a hand on the ball. But um, I noticed it was bouncing out freely, and um, it landed in Mike's hand, fortunately. And Mike was able to run down the court and waste a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, he probably did hit it. I think he did hit it. And, you know, the first instinct was just to grab it and uh, run down the court and try to waste a lot of time as possible. You know, uh, that's a big play for us. All right, from Bernard over here. Yeah, this is uh, for Michael. Obviously, uh, uh, you guys did hold on. Uh, after having a 13-point lead and, and them getting it down to one, um, how much of a relief was it for you, Michael, that that last play turned out the way that it did after you'd missed the, uh, the front end of the one and one with, um, you know, with uh, just over a half minute remaining? Yeah, I was feeling kind of terrible, but I didn't show it. You know, I just had to keep playing, play through it, and tell yourself you're going to make the next, next one and, uh, you know, get back down on defense as fast as you can. But, you know, it, it feels really good, you know, to wind up with the, the ball at the end. A little more sedated right now, but uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes, obviously in good spirits and just riding the road to the Final Four. Unbelievable. 77 to 74 winners over the St. John Red Storm. We're going to wrap things up from Knoxville right now. A programming note after this postgame show right here. Turn it over to Ohio News Network for Pickerington versus Mason Girls Division I basketball final. And then at midnight tonight, if you missed any of this show, we will replay it in its entirety at midnight on the Ohio News Network. Right now, we are going to join CBS programming. And in, it, it is early edition right now that you will see. That's it from the South Region final. The Buckeyes winners and heading to the final four, 77 to 74. We'll see you at 11. Uh, more on the UConn transition game and more from the Buckeye post game report here on the Final Four edition of March Madness. Stay with us. They nearly played till April and when you do that something's got to be going well for you but the Buckeyes great run this season ends 64 to 58 at the hands of the Yukon Huskies. Afterwards, Don Tiberi caught up with one of the seniors in this team, Nashawn Coleman, probably never thought they would make it this far. All right, Jeff, thanks. Nashawn Coleman, Buckeye senior, your last game as a Buckeye, and I know it didn't end the way you wanted, just your thoughts right now. Uh, I'm, it's been a tremendous run for us. Uh, I think we're happy, and of course, this loss, it hurts a lot, but it, it's not gonna take away what we accomplished this year. As you saw tonight, what was the difference? I think their transition game was real solid, and they did a good job of executing their offense. And yeah, Lamina Hamilton made some big shots. Scooney did not wear number 12, number 35. What happened with his jersey? It's odd because he hung it up before we went out to warm up uh, for the first 10 minutes, and when we came back, it was gone, and nobody knew where it was. 
was that distract did that distraction bother you guys at all no not not really everybody wanted to know where it was at but we were definitely focused on going on playing this game you guys accomplished something that a lot of people didn't think you could um, is there any solace right now knowing that that you proved a lot of critics wrong this year oh, oh definitely I, I think we definitely have the satisfaction of, of putting out a lot of good teams in this tournament and finally and making it to the final four and playing against a great team with in UConn and I, I think we did we did a good job tonight but we didn't accomplish what we wanted to and that's making it to the championship game but I'm, I'm happy that to the length that we took this season and, and this has been a great run for us has it sunk in this was your last game not yet uh, th I'm still dwelling on the on the loss that we had but th th this next couple of weeks it it'll probably sink in and I think it'll hurt a little bit but I have to go on with my life how about the fans and and the way they turned out here but the way they've supported this team all year long it, it, it's amazing how they really got behind us and, and pushed us to, to to win the games that we won and they really came out and supported us at, at each game I think every game was a sellout so uh, you have to give credit to them. They, they've been waiting for this type of season, this type of basketball team for so long. And I think when, once they've seen that we have potential to be good, they really jumped on us and, and rolled us the whole way. Sean Coleman, congratulations. You're a class guy on a great season, and thank you very much. Thank you. Jeff, let's throw it back to you. All right, Don, thank you very much. The transition game, as Sean mentioned it right there uh, with Dom, was the difference in this ball game the Buckeyes overcame a nine-point deficit in the first half to take a one-point lead they were down 10 in the second half to come back to make it within four but they could never overcome the transition by the Yukon Huskies missed shots some not good shots by the Buckeyes often led to easy baskets and the Buckeyes just couldn't recover from that coach Jim O'Brien said afterward that the Yukon Huskies are very good at making you pay when you miss shots and of course, add to that a couple of missed free throws and the Buckeyes could never get it within that one transition game that they needed down the stretch. Four points was as close as they could get it. When we return, we're gonna wrap things up on this final four edition of March Madness. Stay with us, we're right back. We're back here in St. Petersburg, Florida. The air kind of let out of the uh, balloon of the Buckeyes season. Finishes at 27-9 and nine on the year. The Sean Coleman, we heard from him after the game. We've got the other senior, Jason Singleton, right now with Dom Tiberi. Hi, Jeff. I'm joined by Jason Singleton. And Jason, just first of all, uh, congratulations on a great season, first of all. I mean, uh, not a lot of people gave you guys a chance to get this far. And I know it didn't end the way you wanted tonight, but your feelings. Uh, we're very happy with our season. Uh, we wish we could have pulled one out tonight against UConn, but I think they just uh, came out. They played hard. They played. They played very aggressive, and they just outplayed us tonight. And I just wish us a lot of luck for the future next year. When you look at uh, this game, just as far as you're concerned, what was the difference? Uh, I think the difference was uh, uh, UConn. They just played hard for 40 minutes. They played their style of play, and uh, we, we we didn't play our style of play. Uh, yeah, they just played hard. They, they played a perfect game, and we just made a lot of mistakes. We were taking bad shots. Uh, the shots that we were, were taking weren't falling, and they just all played tonight. They're a good team. Scooney's jersey disappeared. Did that bother you guys at all? I mean, uh, it, it came up missing. Yeah, we really don't know what happened to his jersey. Uh, we we uh, went out for pregame, we came back, it was missing. We don't know what happened, but, you know, we just have to deal with it and just keep playing. But, uh, you know, we can't blame a game one a jersey. We, we just got our plate. When you look at uh, your last game as a Buckeye and, and this season, what do you leave here with now? Uh, I leave here with a lot of good memories. Uh, uh, I made a lot of good friendships. Uh, you know, I, I just I had a really good experience. I've learned a lot. I've matured a lot. And I'm very happy with uh, being here at Ohio State. And this team has nothing to hang its head about. No, you know, we're very happy with uh, what we've accomplished this year, but we just wish we could have beat UConn tonight to go to the championship. Talk a little bit about the fans. Uh, there were a bunch here tonight. Yeah, we had uh, great fan support. They came down and supported us and gave them a lot of credit and uh, thanked them. And we, we just wish we could have pulled one out for them. Jason Singleton, congratulations on a great season, a great career. And Jeff, let's throw it back to you. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. I will echo that as well. About 15 frowning faces in there, but the Buckeyes brought a lot of smiles to a lot of people this season. Their season ends 64-58 to in the national semifinals 
against UConn. That'll do it for this Final Four edition of March Madness. We wrap things up here, but we're not done. 10 TV Eyewitness News starts right now. From WBNS 10 TV, your 24 hour news source. This is 10 TV Eyewitness News. A major development tonight in Yugoslavia. Good evening, I'm Helen Neal. An American plane involved in NATO airstrikes has gone down, and a defense official says the pilot has been rescued. Video of the burning wreckage ran on Serbian TV. The stealth fighter came from Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. It was part of the air assault aimed at ending growing Serb attacks on ethnic Albanians. Today marks the fourth straight day of the NATO offensive. And while NATO forces have shot down several Yugoslav MiGs, this is the first Allied aircraft to go down. Now, our second big story of the night is happening in St. Petersburg, Florida. And that is where OSU played in the final four for the first time in 31 years. Dave and Andrea, an incredible end to a great season. It really is, Helen. It really was an incredible night. And the Buckeyes are winners tonight. Maybe not tonight's game, but they certainly end with a winning season. I'm Dave Kaler, live in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I'm Andrea Cameron. Thanks for joining us tonight. Boy, it was an incredible ride, wasn't it? And there are still plenty of very, very proud Buckeye fans here in Florida with us. After all, they played an incredible season and a good game tonight, but not even three-pointers like this one from Scooty Fan could keep the Huskies away. The final score tonight, OSU 58, UConn 64. Now, this may have been a bad omen. Scooney took on a new number. That's him, 35. Now, no one knows exactly what happened to his number 12 jersey, but it was not in his locker when it came time to play. Many Buckeye fans didn't even stick around for the second game. They turned their tickets over to Duke and Michigan State fans, but still, fans are happy they made the trip south. As long as you make the attempt, we're proud of you, and we're very proud of the Buckeyes, and I'm glad they did. Number one, everybody great. And if you're Jeff joining us, just joining us, Jeff joins us now for his role in tonight's game. Yeah, it game. didn't take a real professional analyst to figure out what happened here. UConn did it with right. defense and with a great transition game. They ran up and down the court. They got some easy baskets off of, off of some Ohio State misses that really turned the tides in this ball game. We have some highlights, as we mentioned before. Jim O'Brien matching up against Jim Calhoun in this game. 18 straight times Calhoun had beaten Jim O'Brien previously. Make it 19, I guess, after this. And Scooney Penn, as we mentioned as well, wearing number 35. He had it on. Actually, he never had it on. They went out for warm-ups, and when he came back, it was gone. He had nothing left. Michael Red had 18 points for the Buckeyes. Actually, 15 points for the Buckeyes. Richard Hamilton had 24 for the UConn Huskies. But I think Scooney Penn summed it all up best. I don't know. Maybe it hasn't hit me yet that we made it to the Final Four, or even that the season's over. I think right now my mindset and my body just probably ready for a day off and then practice again. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't think this season's over. It's hard to believe because it's been such a long season. It's been a great season. But um, I think once I look back at it, you know, I'll enjoy it all. And just emotionally, it'll be a good feeling, I think. It should be a good feeling for them. And when they all look back at it, it, it will be oh. a good feeling when they think about it. They're disappointed now, obviously, but they'll be all right. You know, but there was a sense of just satisfaction walking out of that arena tonight. Nobody really felt that you know, that heartbreak, like when we lost to Michigan State in football. It wasn't that kind of a disappointment. It was like, boy, what a great ride this has been. No, Ohio State knows that they were not expected to do this. So when they did it, they should all feel good about themselves. And I think they do. Right. And better their chances to come back, too. Great chances of coming back. Yeah. They lose two seniors. They pick up two incoming players that will uh, will step in and make a difference right away. Okay. Here we go again. Yep. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jeff. And as we said, all the fans that travel thousands of miles here to support the Bucks are not going home really disappointed. No, they really aren't. Robin Simmons has talked to the best fans in the country. Robin? They are, Dave. They have been great following the Buckeyes all season long and into the postseason to Chicago, to Indianapolis, to Knoxville, and then here to Tampa, St. Pete, where you can see traffic is backed up. People are trying to get out of Tropicana Field, but it was kind of a rough end to a great season. He couldn't be inside for the Bucks' big game, but John Zamborski wanted to be as close as he could get. John followed the game on his portable radio just outside Tropicana Field. When the game is over, you can book it. But UConn continues on. 64-58, it's over. A heartbreaking loss that's clearly written across the faces of the fans trickling slowly out of the dome in St. Pete. We can't be, we 
can't be disappointed. Although, can't be, but you are. Right, I am, yeah, I am. Disappointment doesn't mean these folks are turning their backs on their team. They say it was all worth it to be taken along for a ride on the Buckeye comeback train. I desperately wanted to win, but if we didn't, this was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, who would have thought this? So, so I, you got to be proud of this team. I mean. And everyone we talked to is proud of this team and fully expecting to be in Indianapolis next year when it's time for the next Final Four. Guys. All right, Robin, thanks a lot and a great job. Robin has been with this team ever since Indianapolis, from Indianapolis to Knoxville and here. And, Robin, you've done a great job. And, of course, you've talked to many Ohio State fans. Actually, she got... She kind of got baptized into this Ohio State business with the West Virginia football game all the way back in September. And she's been with the Buckeyes, both football and basketball, ever since. So, Robin, a great job. Thank Absolutely. you. Thanks, guys. All right. You know, there was no choice to make if you were in St. Petersburg or if you were sitting in your home with the TV on tonight. You were watching the Buckeyes, but that was not the case for some people. They had a tough choice to make. Mike Thompson joins us live from Columbus with their story. Mike? Indeed they did, Andrea. Thousands of basketball fans came here to the shot to watch the high school state basketball mm -hmm. tournament. But they also wanted to watch the Buckeyes in the Final Four. And they used small TVs like this to do it. They were not hard to spot. Buckeye fans trying to catch two games at once. Eyes both directions. Bucks fans with mini TVs enjoying exciting high schoolers and the exciting Buckeyes in the Final Four. But it wasn't easy. The reception's not real good, though. Hardest, hardest thing is the whistle, to know which game the uh, whistle's on. This guy in a luxury suite literally rotated back and forth between games. You've got the perfect chair for this. Yeah, you sure do. It's a good thing it's on a swivel. You can watch them both. <laughs> for a while, it looked good for the Buckeyes. After a state champion was crowned, the fans had to move their viewing outside. Missed it. Missed it. Oh, man. There, they saw the sun set on a spectacular season. Game over. Aww. It was a heartbreaker, but it was fun until the breaking point. We're proud of it. We're real, you know, for, for once, we get the root for the Buckeyes. They did get the root for the Buckeyes for the first time in 31 years in the Final Four, even if they had to use small TVs like this to root for them. <laughs> All right, Mike, thanks a lot. Appreciate it very much. Well, downtown, huh? Downtown Columbus. What does it look like in downtown Columbus in that vicinity? Well, these are live pictures of North High Street near the campus. OSU students, of course, are on spring break. And any basketball celebration probably took a little turn, kind of downturn with the Buckeye loss. So sure. things are much quieter on High Street than a normal basketball victory as far as that goes. And there is someone that is very close to High Street right now. Uh, Kelly Hudson is also out and about tonight trying to get a feel for what Buckeye fans are thinking and doing tonight. And she joins us live from campus. Hi, Kel. Hey there. I'm at the Varsity Club on Lane Avenue, Andrew. And it is loud as you can hear that these folks... Buckeyes, Andrea. Disappointed, yes, but very proud. It's a packed house here. They're still celebrating the fact that they made it as far as they did. <laughs> Folks are not getting rowdy. There is still peace on campus, but they're very happy. Now, take a look at some a story we've got coming up for you. We're going to be taking a look at a couple who got married today and put part of their ceremony on hold for this day. How the details coming up? Putting the ceremony on hold. <laughs> All right, Kelly, thanks a lot. Well, some other Buckeye fans are, Buckeye fans are disappointed tonight. Um, not only because of the loss, but because they're out of some big-time cash. Yeah, it is. This is one of the harder news stories out of here tonight because they came down for some tickets. They don't have some tickets now. And there is a Dublin connection to this story, and Tino Ramos has it for us. Tino? Yeah, that's exactly the case, Dave. There's about 25 people that were from the Columbus area, Buckeye fans, of course. They bought tickets from a place called Tickets Galore. They're located out of Dublin. What they were going to do was uh, pick up their tickets. Then when they came here to Tampa, paying some $450 for them. Now, take a look. We ran into them today. These are the people we're talking about. They were told that uh, after purchasing their tickets, they were supposed to meet a man in Tampa at a local pizza place to pick up the tickets there but uh, when the guy arrived he told him the tickets had been stolen the night before and some of these victims say they're not certain whether they were scammed or not I thought they were reputable I've seen them on the TV news before with other events that were hard to get tickets and stuff so I thought safe calling them I guess I have to believe their story because what am I I'm standing here waiting on their, their tickets and everything 
Yeah, it's too bad for them. We did find out. Matter of fact, you're looking at the video. They are located in Dublin. Ticket galore. We talked with the manager today. He thinks it's possible that these guys did get scammed. Now, we did find out a little bit later that uh, four of the 25 did get back into the game, but we still got a handful of Buckeye fans, Dave and Andrea, that did not make it in, and they are out 450 Absolutely. bucks a pop. So no. not a good story for them. No, right. not at all. Thanks, Dino. Thank mm -hmm. you. And stay with us, everyone. We still have a lot more coming your way live from St. Petersburg, Florida tonight. Stick around because we're going to take a look back at what made this season so special for the players and for all of us Buckeye fans. And we're also going to let you know when the Bucks return to Central Ohio so we can greet them with a more than a warm welcome. Yeah, it was great. Great night, great game, and uh, they, they, they have more games to come, you know? Yep. Yeah, more years to come. Helen, back to you. Thanks, guys. We know you can spell Buckeye, but the words were a lot tougher than that of the Columbus Spelling Bee. Still ahead, an example of what one kid came up against. Also ahead, your Doppler 10 forecast. We've had a gorgeous Saturday looking for a pretty nice Sunday. You'll see details coming up in about five minutes. Plus, find out why this Central Ohio landmark's latest move stopped some folks in their tracks. A 103-year-old Columbus resident forced a railroad to reroute some trains today. We're talking about the old Union Station Arch, which is slowly moving from a park on Marconi Boulevard to a new park near Nationwide Arena. Its entire journey is less than a fifth of a mile, but 10TV's Christine Dobbin reports today that journey included crossing the railroad tracks near Marconi, and that was enough to stop spectators in their tracks. They came with their cameras and stood on the sidelines in their Buckeye gear. Instead of the anxiety that you have before the game, this is the distraction before the game. So we thought we'd come down and spend our morning here instead of worrying about the game at home. But watching history in the making in downtown Columbus can be a real nail biter too. It's quite a, a, uh, a feat, I guess, uh, uh, an endeavor. It took a real team effort to move this 400-ton arch one step closer to its new home court, Arena Park. We're hoping they make it by the time the next train comes through. <laughs> You could say the history and tradition of this 100-year-old arch has already landed itself in the record books. At least the record book of Kenny Breckler's family. But we've only got two buildings in Columbus of any significance that's got terracotta. One is the Lebec Lincoln Tower, and my, gran my father worked on that. My grandfather worked on this, and I worked on this. And those memories will be passed on for generations to come. But you're glad to be seeing it uh, kept intact and moved to another location. First time I've been here this week. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> you probably never thought of arch moving as a spectator sport. But hey, some Buckeyes just can't get enough. Christine Dobbin, 10 TV Eyewitness News. The Arch should get to its new home on Monday. Remember the days before spell check? T O T T E R 